So today I'm going to show you how to patch drywall, specifically a drywall ceiling like this one here because a few weeks ago I had a pinhole leak which I fixed and I made that video tutorial. But for today we're going to show you how to patch drywall quickly and easily and in the end, so in the end, we're going to have an awesome surprise for you so don't miss out on that. Let's dive into the tutorial right now. So this is my kitchen ceiling after the pinhole leak repair. The first thing that you want to do is measure the thickness of your drywall. So on the right side of the joist, I have five eighths. On the left hand side, I have one half. This created a little bit of a problem for me down the road, which I'll explain a bit later. But get the, the thickness of your drywall. Then if you have a light in the ceiling, make sure you turn the electricity off to it. Take a picture of the electrical configuration before you undo it from the junction box. Remove it from the junction box and cap all the lines and then stuff those lines back up into the ceiling. You want to measure the widest part of the opening in your drywall and also the length of the drywall piece that you're going to need. Now, I like to write this down because I always forget the dimensions, so I write it down on a piece of paper. Fortunately, I had an extra piece of purple board from another project. I just used my drywall square to mark out the dimensions and cut it to size. So you can just use a utility knife to do this. Very easy to do. It's like... <laughs> only going to take you a few minutes. Then what you'll do is place that piece of drywall on your ceiling and trace the outline of it using a marker. The reason why you're going to do this is it gives you a clear guide for cutting out that drywall. I just use a standard drywall knife and I tried to suck up all the dust using a shop back. Now you can also score the drywall with a utility knife and then cut it out using that same drywall uh, saw. Now you want to remove any of the screws or the nails using your hammer. Dry fit the piece of drywall up into the ceiling. Now in my case I had to get some extra framing. I needed to cut that the size because you definitely want to support your piece of drywall. So I had to cut some framing the size for that. So this just came in the mail. This is Milwaukee's brand new M18 fuel impact driver. It's also one key enabled. What does that mean and why should you care? Well, you should care because now you can adjust the power on your impact driver. So there are settings one, two, three, and four on here. And you can use your smartphone to set the speed for each setting. So you can customize this M18 one key enabled impact driver. And that is awesome. You need to download the Milwaukee One Key Tool app. Uh, by the way, you can also create a tool inventory for all the One Key tools. And you want to set the modes on the app. So in this case, I've created mode one for screwdriver mode. I made the RPMs about 480 RPMs. And I labeled it screwdriver mode. And then mode four, I maxed out for beast mode, which is for like drilling through cement and so on and so forth. Now, what is nice is you just set it and forget it. You set these modes and then you're done. So what I like about impact drivers these days is the fact that you can actually get drill bits for them and drill through wood. So I set mode three for drilling through the framing that I'm gonna be putting up in the ceiling. So for mode three, I set that for my drill bits and then mode four I used, as you can see, it was powerful. My camera fell over. But mode four, I used that to drill the three inch deck screws through those two by twos. So I did that up in the ceiling for extra support of my drywall. Then I marked the location of the framing, so the joist and the extra framing, with a marker. Now I'm going to be using a special dimple bit with the fuel driver to drive through four one and a quarter inch drywall screws at the corners of my piece of drywall. The reason why I'm doing that is it's so much easier having pre-drilled screws in your piece of drywall when you're hoisting it above your head. That way you can just simply drill the screws through the drywall into the framing and have it there uh, so that you can put the rest of the screws in place. Now I put additional screws in every 12 inches. So what I'm doing here is lining up the location of the recessed hole in my piece of drywall with the other 
recessed lights in my ceiling. Now, I found this really cool adjustable hole cutter at the depot, and I bought it because I needed to cut a recessed hole in my ceiling. And the reason why I got it is it's adjustable, and it comes with a pilot bit, which I really like. And I have a 4-inch recessed light up in my ceiling, so I just I set the setting to 4 inches, but you can also set it for 6-inch recessed lights or whatever recessed hole size hole that you need in the ceiling. And that's why I like this little tool. It also comes with that plastic container so that when you're drilling the hole in your drywall, it catches all of the dust. And that's nice, especially if you're working in a place whereby you don't want to get dust all over the floor like in a, in a kitchen. So you can see here it worked really, really well. The next step is to apply your tape to the transition between the old drywall and the new drywall. I'm using mesh tape because the paper tape will bubble up a little bit with the texture that's on my existing kitchen ceiling. Then I'm using Easy Sand 5. I mix that up to about a milk milkshake consistency. I'm using Easy Sand 5 because I want this to set up relatively quick so I can put multiple coats on my ceiling in one day. So as you can see here, I put on a thin layer of the Easy Sand 5 over the mesh tape and the existing drywall screws in the in the new drywall. Now I'm going to be using Easy Sand 20 after the 5 sets up. So after Easy Sand 5 sets up, I'm embedding Easy Sand 20 in the purple board. I had to, had to actually build that up a little bit so that it can meet up with the transition of the different size pieces of drywall in my ceiling. Like I said, I have half inch on one side of that joist and five eighths inch on the other side. It created a little bit of a problem for me later on in this video, which I'll share with you. So, but anyhow, I'm using Easy Sand 20 because it sets up in 20 to 30 minutes, depending on the temperature and the humidity. This is how I built up all four sides of the purple board. Uh, it's a little bit of an art and I'm not perfect. I'm definitely not a professional drywaller, but I do my best. So I did this for all four sides of the purple board using a 10-inch knife. Now, after each successive coating of joint compound, make sure you clean your knives and that they're super clean as well as your pan. You want to knock down any high spots using your knife. Now I'm going to be using a 12-inch joint compound knife to fill in that purple board even more. I'm trying to pay particular attention to the transitions and try to make them as even as possible. It was definitely a challenge because of the existing texture on my ceiling. But you can do this process just like I did here. You'll probably do a better job than me if you pay uh, close attention to those transition points. Now, like I said, you can do this for all four sides, and then you can smooth out the transition using a damp sponge. I'm just using actually a grout sponge here to do that. What I'm doing next is mixing up Easy Sand 90. You don't want to whip it up too much to create air bubbles. You want to do this nice and steadily. Create a texture or create a consistency such that when you use a texture bracelet, brush like this one, it gives you the texture that you want. So I like having a test piece of drywall and then applying that texture brush to the drywall until I get the consistency that I want or that matches up with the texture that's on the ceiling. Now you can stamp this by hand or you can put a pole in the end of that texture brush and stamp your ceiling like I did here. Now, you have to prime the drywall or the joint compound, and one of the best primers is Kills. I'm using a half-inch nap roller because of the type of texture that I have on the ceiling. I'm cutting in first around all the cabinetry. Then I'm going to roll on my, my primer, and then I'm going to paint over that with flat paint. As you can see here, you can still see a bit of the imperfection in the ceiling, I'm okay with that. I'll live with it. Um, but if you're really paying attention to the detail, you won't have the same mistake that I have. It's not perfect, but again, I'll live with it. So that's how you patch drywall. Now here's the surprise. We're going to be giving away one of these bad boys right here. The Milwaukee M18 Fuel One Key 
quarter inch impact driver. It's a mouthful, but it is awesome. It's now my new favorite impact driver. You're gonna get this, two batteries, a charger, and a hard case. So how do you enter into the giveaway? Well, over here on YouTube, down in the comments, tell me why you want this and how it could help you with your own home improvement projects. It's really that simple, and I'm gonna choose one random winner by next week, before the next video comes out over here on my YouTube channel. So you got one week to enter into this giveaway and then it goes away. This is a great reason to subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you missed out on the giveaway, if you're watching this in the future, or subscribe to the Home Repair Tutor newsletter over on homerepairtutor.com. So that is it for today. I will see you next week because a brand new, a brand new video comes out every single Tuesday, 7 a.m. Eastern Standard Time because we're here in Pittsburgh. That's it for today. I'll see you in the comments. Take care. Talk to you soon. I have drywall dust all over me. It's in my hair, in my beard, on my shirt. Oh my gosh, the joys of working with drywall in your house, right?